Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy, and in this video, we're gonna talk about everything you need to know about the Magna Carta to understand the background, the back history on this event. Let's go. This is where we're going to pick up in talking about the Magna Carta. Are you ready? All right. The Magna Carta, um, 1215 AD. This is a story about King John I and how he had to uh, give up some of his power and give it over to the nobles, or, or in this case, the, the barons. There are three groups. Um, in this meeting, this is a meeting at, at a place called Running Mead in England. There are three groups. There's the king, King John. There's the barons. So I'll just write down the king. There's the barons. And who else was there? Does anyone know who else was there? Yes, yes. King Fatima, King John was doing a lot of bad things during that time. And there was also the church. So we have these three groups, the king, the barons, and the church. And uh, the king was forced to, to sign an agreement, a laundry list of concessions. He had agreed to 66, 63 concessions. Um, so I want to take a closer look at those that were there. King John, the barons. This is a time of Robin Hood. Who's heard of Robin Hood? Who in the class has heard of Robin Hood? You've seen a movie or two of Robin Hood? I don't know which version you've seen and what generation you're from, but you've heard the stories. The kings taxing the peasants and the landowners and the, and, the, uh, and, the, and the barons and the knights. And the taxation is so burdensome that you have the common folk rising up against the king. That's this period. We are talking about that period. Robin Hood comes from that period of high taxation. Why was King John taxing everyone. Why was he taxing uh, barons and knights and, and landowners? Why was he punishing people that did uh, that hunted in the royal woods? What was going on? He was trying to raise money for what? What was he trying to raise money for? During this period, they were in the middle of a what? War! <laughs> There were the Crusades, there were battles with France, there was lots, lots, there was lots of bills to pay. So during this time, we think about the back history, the years leading up to the Magna Carta, uh, King John was taxing like crazy. So let's just think about this for a moment. King John, uh, he was called the bad king. Uh, he, he, got, he became king in 1199. Uh, he uh, died in 1216, so he died immediately the year after the Magna Carta. But he was considered a very ruthless king. What are some of the things that he did? What are some? He took your land. If he, if you didn't, if he didn't like you, he could take your land. He could he could dispose of you. He could not only dispose of you, take your land. He'd take your wife, kill your kids. He was a very ruthless king really abused of power. We're talking about a tyrant here. He got the title, the bad king, for a reason. Well, let's just look at some of those things. Uh, he became king right here. Becomes king. His brother, Richard the Lionheart, dies in the Crusades. Okay, so he becomes king. He has a nephew named John, uh, named Arthur. He doesn't like he doesn't like Arthur. Arthur at this time he dies when he's 16. He gets killed by King John at the age of 16. But but during this time here, there's a four year difference, right? When 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 Richard the Lionheart uh, dies, his son's only 12 years old, so he can't become king yet, right? And when he becomes 16, he's assassinated. So King John is a really ruthless individual. He kills his nephew. You hearing me, team? He's taxing like crazy during this time. 
He's taxing to pay for wars and battles. And he goes into war with France and he loses. And it's a major defeat. And England loses massive amounts of land. So he taxed, he taxed the common folk, the barons, the knights, and lost the war. He's really unliked at this point. And then he gets even, uh, he even has more problems with the church. The Pope wants to uh, have an, a specific archbishop, and, and King John doesn't want that archbishop. So there's a big feud between the church. So the Pope bans all church services. So the Pope in Rome says there will be no more church services allowed in England. No more weddings, no more funerals, no more nothing. Uh, so the Pope excommunicates King John, and King John... Uh, steals all the land from the church. So now we go back to this picture. Now we go back here and we we, we think about the individuals that are involved here. Um, does, does it make sense that uh, the landowners, let's just uh, circle the barons for a moment, might be mad at John, King John, taking their land, taxing them, forcing them to fight in his wars. And if they don't fight in their wars, they're imprisoned or worse, tortured, OK, uh, the church, the church is upset at John. And this is a battle over uh, the church's power to be free. So there is a lot of tension. So he's forced uh, in 1215 AD, he's forced to sign this thing called a Magna Carta. OK, so I just want to highlight this. He's he's lot. There's three. This says here three reasons why people did not like John. OK, why the church. And the nobles uh, disliked him so much. One was that he lost all that land to France. Uh, one was that he did. Another reason was he was terrible. Didn't treat the the nobles nicely. In prison, tortured. He overtaxed. He arrested his enemies. He confiscated land from the church. So so he was not in a good place when he was when he was forced to sign that. So that's another thing. When, when he's at this meeting here, you need to understand when he signs this thing, this is not, this is under dis, duress. What do I need, mean by duress? What's duress? He had no choice. <laughs> no choice. He has no choice. They're very upset. The barons are upset. The church is upset. The king has no choice but to sign these uh, this, this thing called the Magna Carta with 63 concessions. So, so we need to understand the context in which he's signing this. Um, okay, good. So there, that's how we get to this, this event here. All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for part two of the Magna Carta, where we talk about the long-term impact and significance of this document, why it's so important, why we still talk about it today, almost 800 years later. Stay tuned for that. And by the way, if you like this, if you like this video, maybe you should check out a class. I don't know. Check out one of the Go Academy classes. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful in getting ready for your exam. All right, team, see you later. Bye-bye.